for the worship. God is mystery and all. God is spirit and spirit. God is grand creator and holy Christ. And in one thing we know, in the moment of love, in the gift of healing, in the act of grace, in the holding to hope, and we begin again with the Advent brief, May of George. Today's candle is the candle of love, to remind us that Jesus is God's gift to us and that in him the light of love triumphs over darkness. Make sure you win. 
Um, with with science and that is probably the only way to make sure you get to cheat. <laughs> because you don't get a choice in it. When you throw the dice, don't you? It comes up, then you have to go how many spaces, you either land or land. Snake or ladder, land or the snake, you have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it, you've got no choice in it, have you? You just throw the dice and do whatever the dice says. There are some other better games around, I think. Have you ever seen Yancey? Oh, again, it's got dice, got five dice, this one. You've got to throw them, then you've got to make up a decision. Make up your mind about what you want to do with the dice that you've got. And you can't win just by getting good numbers. You've got to make good choices too. So, does that appeal to you? Does that sound good? Or would you rather just have one where you throw the dice and go? Don't have to think. Yeah, well, have a look at these other people. How do you prefer the game where you don't have to think? <laughs> Has its time, doesn't it? Once you get past 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's lots of games where you've got to roll the dice and think as well. You can see the greatest to think of others. But in other ones, you throw the dice and you've got to, got to make a choice where you go or what you do. Chess. Sorry? Chess. In chess, well, there's no dice. <laughs> but, well, chess is a good game, though, where you've got to make decisions. But it's only for others, isn't it? You play chess. Did you hear about that little girl who was eight years old last week? Eight years old and she beat the chess champion from Russia. Scary. It is scary, yes. Thank God for being a teacher. <laughs> yes. But lots of games where you have to make a choice. And I was thinking about the life that we live. Sometimes we can just do things that come along and just we grow up and do older things. But really, in our lives, we've got to make decisions about the things that we do and the things that we choose not to do. And that's part of being a good Christian. Make up our minds to do the good things and, and be guided by what we think God wants us to do. So how do we find out what God wants us to do? You can listen, you can pray, you can read the Bible. There's lots of things you can do to try and find out what God wants you to do. So it's not a matter of just growing up and getting new clothes and better make choices. And difficult choices sometimes, trying to hear what God would say to us. And that's the same for each one of us, no matter whether you're eight years old or 88 or somewhere in between. We pray. Well, God, we thank you for your love for us, the way that you have reached out to people through the ages. We pray that you give us wisdom that, to make decisions that would keep us following your way, the way that we call the truth and the life. We pray for your blessing upon us now as we seek to be your people. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I was going to give you that to play, but... So we'll give you the name of the day as well. Um, one of the most beautiful ladies in the world is going to be free.
Sinner. Then I beg for, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took him from the pasture, and following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall not afflict them in war as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all of your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make your house, your house and your kingdom, so it may be sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is Luke chapter 1, verses 28 to 30, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and he said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. Now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son, and it is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. In this is the gospel of the Lord. Uh, we come to our long expected Jesus. <laughs>
something in common in that people hear the voice of God and they make a response. If it was only that easy. We don't know how much they struggled to hear the voice of God before they made the decisions they did. Often we might make prayers when we seek the will of God and we try to decide what to do, try to decide what not to do. And discerning God's will is not always easy. And there is a hymn that says, so we all think and speak the same and cordially agree. Um, I was once told that the Presbyterians could never sing that. <laughs> William Jones in the late 1700s, that's what he thought. Christians all live in perfect harmony. Well, not always the case. But in the Old Testament reading, David has a great idea. And Nathan agrees. They're going to build a temple, and that's all honour God. Then Nathan, under God's leading, has a change of mind. He understands that God is going to build people and people are far more important. Their future is more important. The building wasn't. And over the centuries following, the temple has been uh, destroyed repeatedly, piled up. But David hears that he's got the change. And he overrules his personal ambition. Uh, what it cost him to set aside, we don't know. But uh, he had his dreams and plans, but they were gone. And then there's Mary's story. Obedience again. Obedience being recognised as uh, understanding God's will for her. And she had commented the reading we had that she is the handmaid of the Lord. <coughs> and again, we can only imagine the circumstances for her. The difficulties she would have faced, the public scrutiny, the pressure. And it probably wasn't as simple as the way that Luke portrays it. And probably not as simple for Joseph either. Now we could be tempted to think that these are Bible heroes. This is what some of the heroes like in the Bible. Um, it's got nothing much to do with us because we're ordinary people. But it is all to do with us, really. We hear their stories, and we hear other people's stories. Stories of encountering God, their experiences of how they come to understand God's leading. And the scriptures are not always just a remote story from long ago. It's something that helps us hear and understand God's purposes for us. It's not like a Harry Potter story that's interesting, but remote, got nothing to do with us at all. Hearing the gospel, the scriptures, affects each one of us. The scriptures tell the story of what it is to be a human being, what people are like, and what we believe God to be like. And sometimes that understanding doesn't come easy, easily. Um, and the experience of the divine over the ages has is, is, um, been a, a very big story for our understandings. But we today, we're still called as Jesus' followers. We're called to discern God's leading. God's will. What is the right thing to do? How should we behave? How do we treat ourselves? How do we treat others? Sometimes we might struggle to understand what is the best thing to do. There may be times like Mary where we face cultural pressures as well. Where our society says you don't do that. It might be the right thing to do. It might be that, like David, sometimes we have personal ambitions, things we want to achieve for ourselves at the expense of other things. Discerning God's way can be difficult, even with something as simple as celebrating Christmas. Maybe there's two Christmases anyway. There's the biblical stories, but then there's the cultural expression of what Christmas is. We know what it's about. We know the Bible stories. But we're also faced with the expectations of what we should be doing if we're going to celebrate, celebrate properly. All the junk mail that comes, that used to come, now comes by email, gives you examples of what you should do if you want to have a proper Christmas. There's ads on TV, there's a certain foods that you should eat, 
Um, they'll tell you how to celebrate Christmas. It's got nothing to do with Christmas at all. Sometimes it's hard to hear what God might want to say to us in the midst of the hype. And um, I got a t-shirt once that said, given to me, had a grumpy old man on it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm cynical rather than grumpy or <laughs> Or like cynical and grumpy. But um, I wonder why you have a public holiday in a multicultural, multi-faith country where many people, most people, are not interested in hearing the story of Jesus at all. God's presence entering the world in a particular way for a particular purpose and not interested in what that might mean at all. But what the church does at this time is that again we declare God's love for the world in this Christmas event. And that's what we celebrate. And after this we're called to love other people. So we make we gifts, give gifts. We have things like the Christmas bowl, where we focus on the very people that Jesus ministered to in his life journey. He looked at the oppressed, the poor, the marginalised. And at times in Christmas there are organisations that name us to make sure that we can do that as well. However, the reality also is that this can sometimes be a very stressful time. Families do become stressed. You hear more about car park rage. Um, there's more shopping trolley rage. One of the machines, those things, and when you get them in the stomach, they're interesting. <laughs> but people find themselves under financial pressure because of the expectations of what they should be doing. And sadly, some people fall, feel more isolated than ever because they have no family or friends to relate to. We hear how organisations like Lifetime <coughs> overwork. We see the Boxing Day sales, which become all important. It seems like people have missed the point. It must have been difficult for David. He had a great idea, he had a motive, but he had the choice. Was he going to listen to what God was saying, or was he going to go his own way? He ends up doing as Nathan says. We have our own experience of God. We have a developed worldview. We see the world very differently to what people did in the first century. We've also got the history of the church over the centuries behind us as well. We've got in that history both the very good and also the very questionable. It's still a challenge for us to live with the opportunities and difficulties before us. It's interesting that this time we're also looking to build uh, building issues. Um, but the building isn't going to be built to be a, a huge temple. It becomes a place where people come because of the architecture. But in the discussion so far, it's been around what can be most useful and also appropriate for helping other people as well. So its purpose is being looked at rather than just uh, the uh, architecture. Although no leaks would be good as well. <laughs> We're not going to keep the building because it's a nice building. We'll keep the building because it will enable us to listen, to understand, and to live out our calling as Christ's disciples. And in our, own, in our own lives, we also have situations where there are decisions that need to be made. And they could be guided by our faith, by our belief in what is the right thing to do, rather than what we would enjoy or like. <coughs> Along this line, we're supposed to be called involved in politics as well, not necessarily with a commitment to a particular party, but a particular allegiance to the one that we choose to follow, Jesus Christ. And that may find that time to be challenged any party that we have uh, affiliation with. What do we do with Christmas? How do we celebrate? Maybe it's the time to think about what is really important in our lives. How do we love God? How do we love our neighbour? 
How do we share the message of Christmas with others? How do we talk about hope, peace, joy and love? Especially to those who do not experience these things in their daily living. Maybe the question before us is what opportunities are there for us to do so and to help in that regard? We can certainly begin with family and friends, but it has to go beyond that as well. We do have choices in the things that we can do. Various organisations can help, but there are times we need to question ourselves. What are our priorities? What are our, uh, our attitudes? And sometimes that's not easy to address. One thing we can do is to explore ways of making Christmas celebration a reality for others, giving meaning to what we do. Um, those of you who were alive in 1972 might remember a singing group called the New Seekers. One of the, the, the songs that uh, was their biggest hit. Look what they've done to our song, remember that one? <laughs> Look what they've done to our song, they've changed all around. Well, I think we do the same thing with Christmas. Look at what they've done to Christmas, what's happened to it, and what have, can we do in our lives to bring back this uh, remembering again of the way of Christ and live that out in the society and the community in which we live. Because we do have choices to make. So, this Christmas we may we again recommit to hearing the voice of God as people have done through the ages. Hear the voice of God at this time, in the midst of the cultural noise and in our celebrations of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. May we learn from him and live out our response. And to God be all glory in that. Amen. So to him,
God, God, may your blessing be upon what we give and what it is used for. May we use the gifts that we have to follow the way of Christ as we are able. In this day we pray. Amen. We'll be always with you. And also with you. We come before God in prayers and intercession for the Spirit. Lord God, because we believe that nothing is impossible with you, we dare to pray that we will be part of the transformation of the world. We long to be agents of your love and your peace as sisters and brothers of the faithful Mary. As we look around us, we know that there are thousands of people who will not be approaching Christmas with a sense of celebration, because their lives are so needed. May we go beyond feeling for others and devote our lives to action to be the agents of change. We pray in silence for these people now.
Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. And tomorrow is eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Seven o'clock tonight. I'll try and do. <laughs> <laughs> may God bless you all. May God keep you in the Spirit's care. May the Spirit lead your lives with love. Amen.